Good morning. Good morning. You know, I'm still shaking from the worship set. Yes. Did anybody else have visions oh, you don't during about? those songs? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. yes. They were powerful yes. this morning. And apparently following our Bible study, you know, if you're not in a Bible study, friends, if you're not picking up this book and asking the Holy Spirit for revelation knowledge today, you're really missing out. Amen. Dr. Boleyn stood up here and she was almost giddy <laughs> yeah, over yeah. her excitement so for what she was learning and passing on to us. Mm. The revelation of the Word of God that is so much deeper than we get when we just read the page. And we've read it for years, right? 50, 60 years mm -hmm. in, yeah. for me. And yet... Every time you open it, it's fresh and it's new Amen. and it's revelation and you get so excited. And then following that, this worship set, I just, I, I don't even know if I can describe it. <laughs> I saw the Lord coming on that white horse and the sun was shining yes. upon him and vast armies yes. of horses coming with him. Yes. You and I yes. coming with him yes. on that day. Yes, amen. And then on the next song, you know that picture of Jesus where he just stands with his arms out? Being, and I would open my eyes and I would still see it. And I would close my eyes and it was still there. God just standing and loving us. Yes. And then on the refiner's fire, we were all kneeling in front of him and his hands shot out fire upon us. He was refining us at the very moment that we were praising His name and singing those Thank words. You, it's so, so important you, to praise God. And I, I'm just kind of overwhelmed right now. I don't yes. think yes. that has ever happened so many visions in succession like that. Mm -hmm. And not that I wanted to break them, but I would open my eyes and it wouldn't break. It was still there. And I was weaving back and forth. <laughs> God, you are so great. You are so amazing. So what a wonderful day. I don't know if I can even come close to, to relaying to you how much I love the Lord and how good He is to us and how important it is for us right now to get into the Word to let it strengthen us, overwhelm us. A couple of weeks ago, I was trying to, I was praying in church, and I think, um, I think Dr. Boleyn was preaching, and I kept, uh, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, what is it you want me to preach? Because I never feel like, you know, I know what to say or, you know, anything. So I, I just asked the Lord, and uh, clear as day came into my head, the 23rd song. Yes. And then Ron said something following the service yeah. about the Psalms and how he was reading them and how, mm -hmm. how they were blessing him and it was like a confirmation, mm -hmm. you know? And so I started looking up and researching the 23rd Psalm. And like Dr. Boleyn, I, I was so excited. I had lunch with my sisters yesterday, four of my sisters, and, and you know, that's what we talked about during lunch. <laughs> I kept saying, I, I just I'm preaching this tomorrow and it's so exciting. And you know, when you're full of God's word, it just overpowers you. It just comes out in everything you say and no matter who you're talking to, you know, it's just there gushing out of your mouth like a fire hose, you know, just with such force. And so I'm I'm blessing God for all of you that have tuned in today because I believe the Holy Spirit has something important to show us as times times are troublesome right now you know they are, really are and I, I was asking the Lord the 23rd Psalm you know it's that's the funeral yeah. Psalm and he said to me oh, oh no 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 it, it's much it's more, more than a funeral psalm and it's it's kind of sad that that's the only time we read it and we all read it then right we all hear it but maybe when we're really hurting we might turn to that, but it's so much more than that. Psalm, you know, it has a message for when we're in sorrow. And right now we should be in sorrow also for our country and for our fellow friends and relatives and God's creation that 
that have such hard hearts right now that are, are turning from him, that think that they have to follow society all over the world to be anti-Christ, anti-God. But God is so much more abounding also yeah, yeah, yeah. because he's reaching out. His spirit is roaming to and fro. More powerful than Satan who is roaming to and fro. Amen. But he, his spirit is overwhelming mm. and drawing people to him. In our Monday night Bible study, we, we constantly, we pray every week, standard in our prayer request yeah. for children and grandchildren. Oh, yeah. And my prayer is always, Father, guide them. Lead them, direct them, draw them close. Draw, draw them close in their lives. Lead them in their lives so that they can be great men and women for you. I mean, it's just standard. It has been for 15 years. We say that prayer every week along with you know, many others that we're praying for at the time. But we need to remember our fellow citizens of the world. Each and every one, they're God's creation. And time is short. So we need to be the light that leads them. That's our purpose. That's our ministry, to be the light of Jesus. Every one of us, we have a ministry. You don't have to be ordained to have a ministry. That's right. That's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a special calling yeah. on those of us who, who God has set apart for that. But each and every person, each and every one of God's creation is set apart. Mm -hmm. If they will accept that, and they have a ministry. Yes, and that ministry is to be the light of Jesus in everything you do. In every lunch that you go to, in every friend that you meet, when you stand in line at the grocery store, or, you know, Target, right? There's always somebody that needs to hear something good. Yes. And I'm not saying you necessarily have to, to spout Scripture at them, but you have to give the intent right. of God's love. Amen. Always. Amen. Amen. Just the intent of who God is, and that's not part of my message, but it's so overwhelming <laughs> on my heart this morning. Very good. <laughs> so I guess it is part of the message. Yes. David wrote this psalm later in his life when he had been through lots of ups and downs and lots of ordeals and triumphs and tragedies. He had experienced many things. So we can say that this particular psalm is for the mature Christian, more so than the new Christian. But for those of us who have been walking with the Lord for, for many years, we're still under attack. We still walk through trials and circumstances just like Jesus did, just like he said we would. And they're multiplying today, aren't they? Everywhere I look, everywhere I look, and it's probably the same for you, somebody needs prayer. Somebody oh, yeah. is hurting. Somebody you know, has broken a limb, somebody has got cancer, somebody has COVID, somebody's dying. So many of God's children have been called home this year. Yes, yes. That's right. And we don't claim to know why some are taken early and some are left. But God knows because He has the entire picture of their lives. And we have to remember that heaven is a good thing. Amen. Hallelujah. It is a place we Amen. aspire to go. We dream to go. We can hardly wait to go. Yes. I officiated at a funeral on Friday, and, and that was just overwhelming to me that we have to understand, yes, we have grief, of course, of course. but we don't grieve for the person, the Christian who is present with the Lord, yes. who is at perfect peace, Thank perfect you. joy. Thank would not come back for all the gold in the world. That's right. Yes, they still love us. Yes, you know, they're going to miss us. And, and they're, they know, though, that we'll be there soon with them. Better than we know it. Yes. That's it's right. a good thing uh -huh. to be with the Lord. Amen. So we should not have fear. You know, we should not have any fear of what's going on today. We just need to continue to stand. To stand like Job did stand no matter what happens to us. God is still there. He's still protecting us. And he talks about that in this 23rd Psalm. He, it expresses the fact that he is the great shepherd. We don't really, we're not agrarian here. We're not farmers or, or shepherds or, you know, cattle ranchers. Most of us are city folk. 
So, like the depth of the Bible, we, we don't really have a great knowledge and inside understanding to the depth of our soul of what they go through. But remember, Abel was a shepherd. That's right. Moses spent 40 years as a shepherd. Yes. David was a shepherd. Amen. And they, we see the image of God in Israel through Scripture as a shepherd as the great shepherd. In Psalm 22, David compares the enemies to animals that are clever and strong. And we think about that often uh, yes, yes. When, when we think of, you know, animals coming after us and, uh, you know, all the wild ones, bears and wolves and yes. such, you know, that we hope we never come across. Right. But God can tame them too. And when we go to heaven, they will be all tame. Yes. Can you imagine? imagine? Yes. Can you imagine? It's going to be amazing. <laughs> so we should think about God as a shepherd who embraces the sheep, you and I. Sheep are defenseless, dumb animals. And that's what we're called. We are defenseless without the shepherd. That's right. He, he is our protector. He is the lover of who we are. And that's the way a shepherd tends his flock. Yes. And you can see it. You know, sheep cannot be driven like cattle. You know, you can see it in the movies how the, the ranchers, cattle ranchers, get on their horses and, and on they get the cattle going, the big herd, and they drive them, right? Not with sheep. If you try that with sheep, they scatter. Yeah. They go everywhere in every direction. Right. So shepherds have little dogs that round them up, and then the shepherd is in front. And he calls the sheep by name. And he leads them by example. Yes. That is God. Yes. That is who he is to us. The leader. And who, you know who those little dogs are? <laughs> Maybe you and I. Maybe those he's called to shepherd, to help shepherd the flock, to round them up. Yes. Are we rounding them up today? Mm. Or are we just walking away? Things to think about. You know, the Lord was telling me all during this time, think about things that, just think about your life and what you have done and what you haven't done as you walked through it. Examine it. Examine where you can see that I led you and you followed and the event was successful. Mm -hmm. And the devourers fell by the wayside. Yeah, you may have a bruise or two. Maybe you even needed stitches. But you survived. And in that survival, you changed somebody's heart. You changed somebody's way of life. You moved some people that you don't even know who they are. We have no idea how many people are moved to love one another just because of our example, because of something we said or a hug that we gave. Those are meaningful, important things in our life because we are called to love. Think about how Jesus walked through the scriptures. He did that. He didn't scream and yell at people. He didn't put them down. There was no hate. He just told the truth with love. Mm -hmm. We need to do that. We need to tell the truth with love, not avoid it, yeah. not hide from it, not walk away from it. Just embrace the simple truth because truth always wins yes. in the end. And love endures to the end. Amen. It's so interesting. There's only seven verses in this psalm. And do you know the seven names of God Almighty are brought about in this psalm? I got giddy over that. I could I never saw that before. I saw the words, but I didn't see them in that context. And when I started looking it up and reading a couple of commentaries and I saw that, I thought well, Lord, that's why you said this psalm. That's why you said it. 
The first verse starts this way. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. I shall not want. That's important to you and I today because we want so many things. You know, we really do. We have so many desires and, and so many needs, for, not only, not just for ourselves, but, but for our country, for our globe, for our world, for our Congress, for our president. So many things. So many needs for friends who are ill, you know, facing surgery, different, you know, just all kinds of things that come at you if you're a Christian and you know how to pray. Those things God directs to you. And we direct them right back to Him because He provides. He's Jehovah Jireh. The Passion Translation reads it this way. The Lord is my best friend, my shepherd. I always have more than enough. Amen. My best friend. <laughs> Think, I was thinking about that. Amen. What is a best friend? Someone you know intimately. Oh, yes. Someone you tell your desires and your hopes and your problems to. And they tell them back to you. And you embrace each other and you stand with each other. Maybe if you haven't even seen them for, for months. And then you see them, you're right back in an instant. We do that to God sometimes, don't we? We get so busy that we forget He's our best friend. Oh, yes. Amen. But he's always right there the minute yes. you call. Amen. Our best friend. Amen. And we always have more than enough if we look to him for our sustenance. Yes. The well never dries up. The more we give, the more we receive. In every area. Sometimes I feel so overwhelmed in my life with the needs of people around me, the things that I have to do. And, and I have two or three friends, uh, women, friends, family and friends that have become widows in just the last couple of years. And, and they are doing all of these things, fun things, you know. And sometimes I sit and I told my sister, doing all this thing and you can come and go and nobody's, you know, needing you. And she looked at me and she said, oh, don't ever feel that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just alone. Mm -hmm. And it hurts. Sometimes I like to be alone. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we all have different callings and different situations that we go through oh, yeah. in our lives. And we shouldn't be jealous of one another. You know, we just need to pray for one another that God fulfills them in the place where they are and uses them in ministry, which he's doing to each of these women have become actual ministers to their friends and neighbors in a way they never were before they were widows. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter where we are. Yes. You know, if you're 75 and raising three grandchildren, and you don't even hardly have a minute to yourself. God is still there. Supplying all of those needs with joy. Yes. With joy in my heart. Experiencing these three children just being different than they would have been oh, yeah. if God had to place them in our home. Yeah. It's overwhelming sometimes, you know. It's just overwhelming. But yeah. God yeah. is Jesus. our best friend. Amen. He gives us everything that we need in order to follow Him and do what He's called us to do. The second verse says, He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and He leads me beside still waters. Still waters. Jehovah Shalom. The God of peace. Still waters. No turbulence. Those times in our life, there might be turbulence out on the sea, but where we're walking, it's calm. It's perfect. Peace, be still, Jesus said to the storm. And he says that to the storms in our lives. Don't you know I'm here? You have no need to fear. You have no need to worry. You'll have no need to know, but I'm here, and I will walk you through it. 
I will fix the circumstances. And I am there, so you don't have to worry about it. Just go forward and do what I tell you to do each day, each hour, whatever it might be. Just walk. Don't turn around. Don't lie down. Just walk through it. And the, the passion, I wanted to bring the passion verses in here. I, I know they don't sound as familiar as the King James, but they're so broad, you know, and the, and the heart of God is just so evident. It says, He offers a resting place for me in His luxurious love. Luxurious love. His tracks take me to an oasis of peace, a quiet brook of bliss. Picture that. An oasis of peace. Doesn't matter what's going on around you. It doesn't matter what turmoil is going on in Kenosha, Wisconsin, or New York City, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, or Los Angeles, or any other place. Amen. It doesn't matter. Don't let your eyes look at that, just like Sister Belin said this morning. Right. Don't count on that. Don't make your whole view be that turbulence. Because that will set your direction. Yes, amen. Keep your eyes on the still water. Yes. The peaceful oasis. The, the bliss of God Himself. Taking our hand. He's our best friend. He's got your hand. He's got your arm. Yes. It's around you. And He's walking you through it. Yes, yes. And if you stumble, He will pick you up and you can lean on Him. Thank you. And you'll get through it. Amen. You'll get through it. Even if you don't think you can. He can. That's all that matters. He can. It's like our parents did to us. It's exactly the same. God put His Spirit into us so that we would have the Spirit of protection. His parental yes. Spirit. Mm. And our parents did that to us. Oh yes. And they protected us and they brought us to where we are today. Yeah. And I know that some people didn't have that. I know that some of you probably look back on your childhood, perhaps, and don't feel like your parent was that kind of parent. But you know what? God was still there. Yes, he, was. he was still there with you. And you know that because you came through it, didn't you? Yeah. You came through it. And you're watching and hearing the word of the Holy Spirit today. He was there. He brought you through it, no matter what. The oasis of peace. Can you find that peace in these turbulent times? You can. You can find that peace when you look toward the Word of God and not toward what your eyes are seeing. It doesn't matter. God's still on the throne. Yes, He is. One of my favorite sayings these days. Because everybody's afraid. And everybody's talking about what's going to happen, what's going to happen, what's going to happen. God's still on the throne. Nothing's surprising Him. Amen. Amen. He has a plan. He's got it in motion. <laughs> yes, He does. Can you imagine how Israel felt in those days when they were overrun by the Assyrians, the Babylonians? They were captured. They were stuck in Egypt for 400 years. It's the same thing. We're being overrun today, aren't we? It seems that way. But God's still there. And He had a plan the entire time. And He worked His plan. And those who trusted in His plan, those who stayed fast upon His Word, walked through. They walked through the fire. Amen. And we're going to do it today. We're still going to do it. Today. Yes, we are. Because God's not abdicating the throne. The third verse is, He restores my soul. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord who heals. He restores us. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. It doesn't matter because God has restored your soul right. when you ask Him to come into your heart. When you asked for forgiveness and repented, a true repentance. He rebuilt you. He repurposed you. He restored everything that you are. And He made you a new person. Yes. Amen. And He birthed you over again in His glory. So that we could reflect His glory to the world today. So that when people look upon us, yes. 
They see God's glory. That's an awesome responsibility. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we don't have to manufacture it. It's God who does it in us and through us. Yes, it is. Thank you. If we will allow Him to. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. The paths of righteousness. Jehovah said canoe. The Lord of our righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. Never saw these things before. Because I just looked at them as the soul that was on its way to heaven. But it's for you and I here today on this earth. We need to walk the path of righteousness. We'll get laughed at. Yeah. Satan will put blocks in our way. Oh, yes. But you know what? God can lift you right up over it. Amen. Paths of righteousness. Passion reads this way. That's where he restores and revives my life. He opens before me the pathways of God's pleasure. Did you know you were God's pleasure? He has so much joy in his heart when he looks down upon us and he sees his children walking those paths of righteousness. Showing the love that He put within us. Beaming the light out in spite of the darkness. Sharing with others. He says, that's my child. That's my child. Pastor Mike was saying that about those of us that he's brought up to be pastors and educated us at promise to become literate in the scripture and you know you can even get your doctorate and you still learn every day every day it never stops because revelation knowledge is pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon us today pouring out because he wants us to know the depths of his word and I'm sure it's even deeper than we can even imagine and gain here but but we'll gain that when we stand with him in heaven but we're still standing with Him right now on this earth because He is here. Amen. He's not left us. Yes. He's not forsaken us. Never, he's, never brought, he's sent the Holy Spirit to be within us. Therefore, He's with us always, walking every step we take. Thank you, Lord. Talking to us, telling us where to go and how to do things. Always. That still small voice yes. that becomes so powerful within us the more we recognize it, the more we listen for it, the more we ask the Holy Spirit for wisdom. Tell me what to do today, Father. Gosh, I do it all the time. I feel so inadequate. And I'm always saying, God, what do you want me to do here? How, how can I handle this? What are you trying to teach me? Let me learn fast. Yeah. <laughs> I always want to learn fast. Get it accomplished. Get it done. Amen. It's always on time. <laughs> yeah, he leads me along in his footsteps of righteousness so that I can bring honor to his name. Oh, amen. That's amen. our purpose. Yes. To bring honor to God's name for God's name's sake. So that when we are called Christian, we're different. Yeah. We're different than someone who doesn't call themselves Christian. We need to be different. And if we're not, we're not bringing honor to God's name. We can't be straddling the fence. Right, that's right. You know, we just can't. That doesn't bring honor to God. Even non-Christians look at that and say, Ooh, who do they think they're a Christian? Look at them. I mean, isn't that the biggest cop-out you hear? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's a Christian. Look at him. Yeah. Why, should I, why should I change my life? Look at him. Yeah. That's right. We need to bring honor to God's name. Yeah. And again, it's God who does it. Yes. If it were not for God, we wouldn't even come to Him. But He draws us. Yes. And that's why it's my prayer for the children of this world, that God would draw them, that His Spirit would always be surrounding them, leading them in the right direction. Because, friends, children today are being indoctrinated with every horrible thing from the pit of hell. It's a terrible situation. Yes. It really is. 
and Christian parents, you need to do something about it. Amen. You need to stand up. That's right. You need to say no, not no more. I took mine out of school, and they're homeschooled. I mean, I know everybody can't do that. It takes a lot of time. But we can stand up to the school districts. We can say no. Some, some are doing it. You can hear it around about okay, these yeah. days. Okay. It's being coming exposed as because it's more blatant. Yes. It's more blatant. It's it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. They show actual pornography. If you had it on your computer, you could be arrested. The things they show. Mm -hmm. The things they're teaching kids. Mm -hmm. It's abhorrent. They teach them to hate this country. They teach them to hate their parents. They don't need their parents. They just need the government and the school. Imagine your children. I'm sure you're experiencing this, some of you. Your children coming home from school with attitudes that are so negative. And everybody, you know, everybody's telling them it's okay. Everybody feels that way. They're so confused. You have to undo what they've been taught in school when they come home. That's right. And college, it's even worse. It's even worse. Charlie Cook, who started Turning Point, um, was in college, saw um, early on, in, in, I think he was a freshman, what was going on mm -hmm. in the indoctrination. Mm -hmm. He walked away and started Turning Point. And he now has a huge organization that goes into college campuses across the United States. And he talks to kids. And he tries to come against the indoctrination. And he tells them about Jesus Christ. It's an enormous movement. And he's, the conference I went to, that he was there, he said, parents, unless your child wants to be a doctor or a lawyer or such, don't send them to college. They will come back by Christmas hating you. They will come back by Christmas a changed person. They will not like you. They will not like anything about you. They will not like God. They will not like the government. They will like everything that's deviant. That's why we have so much rebellion going on in the streets. The colleges have created this. Christians need to stand up. We've been sitting down for way too long. We've been turning the other cheek when we should have put out the sword. There's a time to turn the other cheek, but there is a time to bring the sword of the Word of God. Amen. And it's coming. All of these things are putting us in a position for the end of days. That's going to happen because God said it's going to happen. But as Christians, we can still be effective in this world when people really need it. They need to change. They need to come back to the Lord. The church needs to come back to the Lord. Yes. Why don't we know these things? Because it's not being taught. It's not being taught. You and I need to become the teachers. If it's not being taught in our churches because they're consumed by political correctness and society, yeah. then God's placed us there. And it's also our responsibility, each of us. Yes. Yes. Sometimes I'm so jealous of you because you're taking all these... My childhood... I was under condemnation all the time coming yeah. out of my church oh, yeah. doctrine. I didn't think I could be anything. Mm -hmm. But that's not what God said. No. It is not what God said to any of us. Mm -hmm. We can all be something yes. for God. We can all be a light in the darkness. Amen. He restores. Amen. He revives. You can't even retire. <clears throat> you have to get revived <laughs> and get on fire for God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. Give yeah. God glory. Amen. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I love that. He opens pathways to God's pleasure. God's pleasure. Mm -hmm. Have you found pleasure in things you never thought you would? Yes. Yeah. Little things. Great pleasure. The sunset, the sunrise, the smile of a person who's just received healing. Mm. The joy of praying for someone and hearing the answer. Yeah. God's pleasure. Oh, yes. 
God's made you into that parent who is overwhelmed with the success of their children. You don't have to be a physical parent. We can all be parents of everybody in the sense of watching over, in the sense of protection. That's what God's given us, each of us. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You are with me, Jehovah Shammah. The Lord is there. The Lord is there. Wherever you are, He yes. is there. Amen. Always. You are never wow. alone. And we do walk through valleys, don't we? Oh, yes. We're walking through a big old wide valley right now. <laughs> and there's lots of turbulence around we us. No fear. But do you fear? You don't have to fear. Oh, no. Turn off the television. And turn on the gospel. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'm not saying be unaware. You know, watch the news. Get get a sense of what's going on so you know how to pray. That's what you need to know. How to pray. Yes. How to stand with God. How to stand with Christians. How to stand with the Word. That's what we need. Thank you. And you can't be fearful no. when you're standing with the Lord. You can't be fearful when you shout out, He's still on the throne. Fear flies. Faith consumes fear. So we can't be fearful. The Passion reads it this way. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. Oh, amen. Think of that. Wow. You already have. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Man. Fear cannot conquer you, amen. no matter what. No matter. Amen. You may have little dips and spikes. Oh, sure. That's life. We live here in this evil world. Mm -hmm. But it cannot conquer you. Amen. You already have. You remain close to me and lead me through it all. Your authority is my strength and my peace. Your authority is my strength and my peace. The comfort of your love takes away my fear. I'll never be lonely because you are near. Never be lonely because you are near. Is there darkness in your life right now? Is there darkness? Is there fear? Let God take it away. Yes. His authority can be your strength. Your strength of character. Mm -hmm. Your strength of the word. If you're lonely, means you need to get up and find a friend to give the gospel to. Amen. God's calling you. That sense of loneliness is a calling to move out in the Word of God. Don't wallow in loneliness. God is with you. Amen. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The presence of my enemies, Jehovah Nisi, his banner is over us. Thank you, Lord. Friends, your enemies cannot hurt you. They cannot devour you because God has prepared a table for you. Passion reads this way. You become my delicious feast. Even when my enemies dare to fight, you anoint me with the fragrance of the Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows and the King James you anoint my head with oil my cup runneth over Jehovah and Kadesh the Lord who sanctifies he has sanctified you he has poured oil of the Holy Spirit upon your head he has put a banner over you and people will see and it will bring protection. Nothing can come through it. He will protect you. No matter what happens, He will protect you. Think of Stephen being stoned. 
kneeling on the ground with his eyes on God. Do you think he felt those stones? I don't think so. I think he was so in tune with his Father and with Jesus Christ. It didn't matter what went on. Spirit of protection, a banner, a table in the presence of your enemies. We need to quit worrying about those things. They're of no value and no importance when God's protection is over you. Amen. It doesn't mean you're going to be, everything's going to be smooth sailing. It doesn't have to be, because it really doesn't matter. You just push it aside. Mm -hmm. Life happens, right? Yeah. But so does God. Amen. He provides everything we need in the presence of our enemies. He sustains us and gives us strength, guidance, and wisdom through the Holy Spirit. This will drive fear and inadequacies away and leave us in a close union with Him and our heart is joyful and overwhelmed. You can be overwhelmed with joy when you see turbulence around you and you're in just a little tiny space of peace. Right. And you think, glad that didn't hit me. Went right on by. So why would I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. And then afterward, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence you. forever with you. I'll return to you. You can't return unless you were there to start with. That's right. <laughs> you were always in God's presence. You were always in His heart. He created you, That's right. unique and different and special. You're not like anyone else. You are you. You will reach people that no one else will reach. That's right. You will love people that no one else will love. You will change lives that no one else will change because of your unique personality, words, way of life. All of the things that make you you will hit somebody else. Maybe many somebody else's. And they will see it in you. You can't hide it. I know you've been told by people. You, you're amazing. I, I see so much in you. I see this in you. I see that in you. Haven't you? You've been told. You're so kind. You're so loving. You don't get upset. That's a shocker. I used to get upset quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. I was very reactionary as a child because I, I had this perfection thing that God put in me. And I couldn't stand it if, if I failed in any way. It didn't bother me when other people did. But if I didn't get an A on a test in oh. school, I was pretty mad at myself. Oh. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. <laughs> I was a hard taskmaster. But at a point in my life, God said, give it up. Let me do it. Surrender that need to be perfect because I am perfect. Yes. You don't have to be. Quit worrying about it. Confess your sin and receive forgiveness. Be restored. Be restored. And the closer you walk in friendship with this best friend, the less you will want to sin, the less opportunity to sin you will have. Because you just don't put yourself in that place. I'm not saying we're going to be perfect. But we're a far cry from where we were. Amen. Right? Amen. As we grow. <laughs> King James reads, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. Is goodness and mercy following you? Yes. I feel it following me. And the more you think about it, the more you will see it. We have to watch for these things. We have to recognize them. Goodness and mercy are with us. When things that might have happened don't happen. God is goodness. And He is mercy. 
And his mercy endures, right? His mercy endures forever. Forever and ever. His goodness and his love pursues us. It comes after us every day. All the days of our life. And then we get to return to him. We get to come Amen. home. Amen. Amen. Don't fear going home. Going home is a good thing when it's time. And God knows the time. You and I don't. So don't be concerned about it. Don't fear it. Just know that when the time is right, you'll be ready to go home. You'll be ready to go and see Jesus. You'll be ready to climb up on that throne into the Father's lap and give him a big hug and let him hug you. You'll be ready for that. You will recognize your brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, who you've walked with for years, right by your side every day, who went to the cross so that you could become his brother. You'll recognize him. It won't be a surprise. Yes, good to see you again. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You'll embrace the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, Jesus. Say, oh, you've done so much. I love talking to you. I love the things you tell me. I couldn't have done it without you. Those are the things that we'll embrace when we get to go home finally. <clears throat> so friends, as we go through these turbulent times, take out this psalm. Understand what it really means. And apply it to your life before the funeral. Apply it to every day and know that God is telling us, each and every one of us, those things he wants us to know. Those things that he wants to embed in our spirits. So he doesn't want us to be afraid. He doesn't want us to worry. He wants us to triumph and give him the glory. So all glory and honor be unto Jesus Christ and the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. I ask God's blessings upon each and every one of you today. That you would walk in the power of His might and in the peace of His Spirit and give glory and honor to His holy name. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's what I kept saying.